Good evening, everybody. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcomed in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Healing, you are welcomed in this place. Healing, you are welcomed in this place. Deliverance, you are welcomed in this place. Deliverance, you are welcomed in this place. Restoration, you are welcomed in this place. Restoration, you are welcomed in this place. Healing, you are welcomed in this place. You are welcomed in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this space. Hallelujah, somebody. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, whatever time of day this message finds you. I was sitting and I said, well, Lord, the day has completely almost passed me by. And I said, well, Lord, what is it that I would give to the people? What is it that I would give to the people? So first of all, I sat back and, you know, the Lord has been dealing with me with some scriptures in the book of Romans because the Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. So in this season, I am just urging all of the people that are listening to this you don't have to be saints of God you don't have to be um, knowledgeable of God but right now in this season it's good to turn your hearts your minds your spirits and your souls over to God um, as I've been reading and studying the Bible and in prayer God speaks to me and it's just like when the Lord had me to open up the Bible recently to look up some things as I was looking and as I was understanding, then I said, Lord, I get it. Lord, I understand. So the spirit of the living God allowed me to know that I just have to cry loud and spare not and speak the word that is written in the Bible um, pretty much regardless to you know how people feel about it how people feel about it and it's not to judge anybody but it is to point people and individuals to god to jesus and to point them in the correct direction so that god can come on in and begin to do some healing some deliverance some restoration some restoring because in this season you know, the scripture from Second Chronicles keeps coming into my spirit. And that scripture says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, I will hear from heaven. I will for I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal the land. Yes, the wages of sin is death. The wrath of God does come upon the children of disobedience. But we've got to say, okay, Lord, what is it that we must do to get back in order to reverse these curses, to reverse these plagues and to reroute this path of destruction? We have hurricanes. We have bush fires, brush fires. We have had a fire tornado last summer in California. We have had sandstorms. We have had sinkholes in other countries. We have had every form of natural disaster. Mudslides have taken out millions overseas in other countries. We've got COVID-19 that is coming in like a tsunami and just taking out millions of people. So I said, Lord, what is it that I must do? Hallelujah. What is it that I must do? So the first thing the Lord told me to do personally to get equipped said, you know, the Bible says he took me to Matthew. The Holy Spirit took me to Matthew 4 and 4. Man, can I live by bread alone? but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then he took me to a Psalm of David, Psalm 119.11. It says, Thy word that I have hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So I said, Lord, what is it that I must do? He, the, the Holy Spirit says that I must keep 
the blood over my door, over my house, over my uh, child, over my family. Minister the word, do what I can. But if it falls upon deaf ears, that is the choice that people as individuals have to make as individuals. You know, God is full of grace, compassion, and mercy. God says if you turn your heart to him, he will turn his heart to you. God says if you love on him, he will love on you. God says if he if you bless, praise, and worship him, he will bless and and bless and basically honor the praise and the worship and he will open up doors of good health knowledge wisdom understanding um occupations doors will open up door after door after door but we've got to know that if we seek we find if we ask we receive and if we knock the door is open but we've got to operate in the spirit of repentance and obedience so today the spirit of the living god says that the, the world right now is in disarray. The reason why we have the plague such as COVID-19, cancer, AIDS, herpes, hepatitis, all the other diseases, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. The wrath of God comes upon the children of disobedience. In the season, God says people are turning to the right to look at what the world is doing, turning to the left to see what the world is doing, turning to the right to see what they're doing on television, turning to the left to see what they're doing on reality TV, turning to the right to see what's going on in radio, turning to the left to see what they're doing, turning to the right to see what our neighbors in the communities are doing, and turning to the left to see what our neighbors are doing. And everybody is so consumed with looking around to the right and to the left and what's going on behind them, what's going on above them, what's going on below them, what's going on around you is pertinent to be aware of your surroundings, yes, but to allow these things to, things to shape to mold and to form you is out of order with God. It's out of order with God. So the spirit of the living God says it right now in the season, they're out of order. And the spirit of the living God is saying that we've got to turn our hearts back to God. We've got to get a heart of repentance. So I said, well, Lord, what is it that I should tell people? Well, people need to know that our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. And uh, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. First of all, we've got to put prayer back into our home. We've got to wake up and say, you know what, God, I only know one prayer and I'm going to pray that God, I'm getting up this morning and I only know one prayer. And so I'm just going to wake up this morning and say, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you for my life. I thank you for my health. I thank you for a roof over my head, for food on the table, for transportation. I thank you, God, today for my bare necessities. I thank you, God, for a little bit more. I thank you, God, for the overflow. I thank you, God, for putting me in my right mind. Mind. I thank you, God, for being God of healing, deliverance, and restoration. I thank you, God, for even in spite of in spite of me, I thank you, God, for sending down the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. You did when you didn't have to. So today, I thank you. We've got to develop an attitude of gratitude in this season. In this season, God is saying the church, the world, and the homes are out of order. Hallelujah. So right now I prophesy in the name of Jesus that somebody that is listening to this message will say, I got to get back in order. I've got to get back in alignment with God. I've got to get back into a spirit of obedience with God. I've got to get back into walking in the wheels in the way of God. Hallelujah. Because we have come so far and just to end up basically in a situation of disarray and of discontentment. You know, this is not nothing new under the sun. I will be doing a message over Facebook. I've got to edit it. Not over Facebook, but um, over YouTube. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to put it on my Say Yes page, but I have a message dealing with the reason why things happen, the reason why things occur, the reason why we have COVID-19. Everything 
is out of order. Everything is out of order. Everything that God says was a deadly sin. Everything that God said was a abomination are the things that the devil is throwing out there like a fireball and blowing them up. The people that are actually doing things that are abomination against God are the ones that have millions and millions and millions of hits and followers on the internet. And I'm talking about like the biggest numbers, you know, so I've just got to be prayerful and I've got to be mindful. And so what is it that we need to do to get in order with God? First of all, the greatest commandment that God left us with is love, love, love. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So first of all, the Bible teaches, I cannot serve two masters. Either I'm going to love one or hate the other because God is not going to go with this wishy-washy back and forth, you know, like that Aaliyah song, back, back, forth, and forth. We can't go back and forth with the world. We can't go back and forth with sin. We've got to get our hearts and our minds made up to say, you know what, I'm going to serve God with my heart all my heart, my mind, and my soul. And if I fall off, I've got to be repentant. I've got to be genuine in repentance, genuine in repentance. And so then the Holy Spirit says, you know what? Breeze through the Ten Commandments. And the Ten Commandments are as such. You can find them in the book of Exodus chapter 20. It says, and God spake these words saying, I am the Lord thy God. And which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, thou shalt have no other gods before me. So we've got to be mindful of uh, of what, um, you know, of other gods. You know, there is a whole lot of other religions. There's Greek gods. There's pagan gods. There are uh, all kind of witchcraft, soothsaying, um, palm reading, tarot. Those things are all classified as abominations to God. So we've got to be mindful. We've got to be careful. We can't look and say, oh, well, they're doing this over here. Oh, well, they're looking, they're doing that. God is going to, you can get to heaven's gate and God will say, I know you're not your works are of iniquity because this person to the right that you're copying is, was your God. The person to the left was your God. The person on television was your God. The person on the radio was your God. The person on the internet was your God. So we've got to know that we've got to get our minds and our hearts set to serving God uprightly and wholeheartedly. And so then it says, and thou shalt make unto thee any graven images or any likenesses of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath and that is in the water under the earth. So be careful and be mindful about paraphernalia, plaques, and all of these other things. You know, like for myself, I'm not into um, collecting anything. I don't collect nothing. You won't see, you know, basic artwork, basic pictures. You go, oh, that's pretty. Put it on the wall. But it's nothing that I, I you know, I'm not cashing to nothing. I'm not stepping to nothing. Because how can you praise and worship and how can you dance for the Lord and then turn around and cache for the devil on Thursday, Wednesday, and Tuesday and participate in ritualistic satanic practices that God does not basically find pleasing in his sight. You know, you can't serve two masters. You got to serve one or the other. It says, thou shalt not bow down thyself to worship them, nor serve them. For I am the Lord thy God. I am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon their children unto the third and the fourth generations of them that hate me. So we've got to be careful about um, basically bowing to other images. You know, if you want to cash your around, because I heard a girl, she was singing a song to her, the organization that she was in and oh, how she loved this, that, and the other. And I'm like, how well is that sitting with God that is in heaven, that this person is singing, that they love these acronyms. So, but I'm going to mind my business and go on to the next commandment because, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, one, two, and three commandments are broken being a part of certain organizations because they they violate um, idolatry, the serving of other gods, 
as well as um, idol worship. You know, so it says then and show mercy unto thousands of them that love me and that keep my commandments. It says thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain for the Lord will not hold will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. So it says remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. On the sixth day, thou shalt, uh, uh, shalt on six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. But on the seventh day, it is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In um, in it thou shalt not do any work. Nor shall thy sons, nor shall thy daughters, thy manservants nor thy maid servants, the nor cattle. Basically, nobody works on the seventh day. So let's take a look, do the book, we and let's get in order with God because the new the the this is a detailed breakdown of the Ten Commandments, but the Ten Commandments are reiterated a few times by Jesus in the New Testament, at least two or three times. Then it says, Honor thy father and mother that thy days may be long in the land which the Lord does give me. But it also says you got to know the word of God. It says in the New Testament, mother and fathers do not provoke your children to wrath. So you have got to basically uh, be mindful, respectful, and you've got to be uh, basically you can't be mean, abusive. Can't be controlling because a controlling spirit is the spirit of witchcraft. You can't control what your children do. That's witchcraft. That's witchcraft. Controlling spirits are not godly spirits. Manipulative parents can be manipulative, and you know you got to be mindful. You set rules and regulations for your children when they are adults. You got to respect adults as adults. Period. In the story, so thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, and I'm going to parenthetically park right here because, you know, when it comes to thou shalt not commit adultery, when you commit adultery, you not just violate another person's household, you also violate and disrupt the life of children. And when we are, when not we, but when people are out committing adultery, adultery um, messes up and it ruins relationships. Okay. It violates relationships with children. And regardless of what your situation and circumstances is, adultery is adultery. And if you are committing adultery, then that is a sin against God. But thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against your neighbor, and thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's manservice, maidservice, nor ox, nor ass, nor anything that is of your neighbor's. So basically, if you coveting something, like, ooh, that, this person got this, don't do that. You got to focus. You know what I'm saying? Because that's just like, if you're looking at somebody like, oh my God, I focus, I, um, I'm coveting this person's call, their anointing, their purpose in life. Don't do that. Because when God calls somebody or anoints somebody to do something, it is very important to just go ahead and let that person do what it is and not try to emulate, not try to copy because God is not going to break everything. And basically, you're you're not getting the ear to the, what the spirit is speaking to that person for the purpose in which God called them. And so whatever you do to distort, distort disturb, disrupt, you know, is outside of the will of God. So I pray that everybody gets back in the will of God, become prayerful, put prayer back in your house. And so remember, there is a pathway to God. Know that you've got to be repentant. You have got to be obedient. You've got to be prayerful. You've got to have a heart of love. You've got to have faith. And then you've got to have some praise and prayer and some worship. That is the recipe for success in Christ. So my prophetic nugget tonight is um, 
getting in order with God. Because, see, I got to get myself in order, my house in order. I got to get my, I got to get the the blood of Jesus covering my post, my car, my house, my child, my business, the things that I am involved and engaged with. And then I can share the good news of Jesus Christ. And then it's up to each person to make a choice. Because those who sin, and this is a cliche, I'm going to end with a cliche, um, to sin is human. God gives us grace. He gives us mercy. He gives us compassion. God says, even I have blotted out your transgressions and I have thrown them into the depths of the sea. But to continue and to persist in sin, that's when it becomes devilish. That's when it becomes demonic. And that's when it gets to a point where God becomes unhappy because people think, oh, I can just say, I'm sorry and do it again. I'm sorry. I'm going to do it again. I'm sorry. And then do it again. And God sometimes says, okay, now I've got to swoosh down. That person has no intentions on ever changing or ever serving God. So because they have no intentions on genuinely serving God, that's when God then basically says, okay, if you win, you win. If you do this, you do that. If you win by chance or luck, that's fine. But my hands are off of certain situations because there are some th people that use the term blessed. But it's not blessed because at some point in time, if you read about Hananiah, Hananiah was a false prophet. And so God says, you know what? If the Israelites, if the, these people, if they go out here and they work hard and they obtain things because the Bible tells you, fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thou envious because the wicked, they do prosper. You will see people out here with um millions of dollars you will see people out here with a lot of stuff a lot of things you will see people out here with stuff and don't even worry about it it says fret not thyself because of these things because they went out there they worked they violated the sabbath day they violated certain codes of ethical codes of conduct they looked down on people they were not nice to people they mistreated people they didn't help out the little people the homeless, the people that's out on the street, the street people. Because, see, Christianity literally was to bless people. Jesus didn't judge the woman at the well. He went to her and he says, okay, this is your situation. Go your way and sin no more. So in this season, God is allowing a U-time, okay? God says in this season, hallelujah, the church is out of order. But I prophesy order over your house tonight. I prophesy order in your prayer lives tonight hallelujah somebody i prophesy uh obedience in the name of jesus over hallelujah your finance over your relationships and over your dealings with people hallelujah i prophesy tunnel vision and a focus on god over the people tonight hallelujah somebody that we can make a u-turn because COVID 19 sickness and plagues they are not going anywhere i prayed and i cried with god and as i prayed and i cried with god i had to come to the realization Sin is manifested and magnified, and it has reached an all-time high. And that's why so much sickness, disease, and pestilence has hit the world. So this is pre-tribulation, and um, so just keep be, be prayerful. Stay in the Word of God. Read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation because that's the only way to understand it and to comprehend it and to comprehend God. See, I read the Bible 20 some years ago and God just gave me certain revelations on certain things today. You know what I'm saying? So it's it was a process. It was a process. It was a growth process. It was a maturing process. So um I'm just here to tell you that God is here to heal, deliver, restore, and to bless you. But he allows you time. So all of the things that are out of order in your life, you can't worry about the world. You can only live your life by an example. So in this season, hallelujah, I'm prophesying 
uh, restoration, deliverance, and healing for all of the other homes that somebody might be touched and change their hearts and their minds back to God today. Okay, so I got to get out of here because I I always mean to do five or ten minutes in the spirit of the Lord says, no, people need to know how to pray. People need to know that we've got ten basic commandments because if we follow the ten commandments, everything else will fall in line because the first commandment is love. It's actually 11 commandments because Jesus says, you know, the greatest commandment of them all is love. The greatest commandment is love. So, because people ask me, well, you're an analytical person, you know, you have, you know, you're educated, and how can you listen here? I met the Holy Spirit, and when the Holy Spirit comes in, and he modifies your way of thinking, so there's nothing that can be said or done to reroute or deter the things that I feel about God, because the mega theme of the Bible is, number one, love, obedience, and he said, because I know sometimes you can't help yourself, I give you repentance, but don't let repentance and grace be a crutch for you to continue in sin, so today, I prophesy order, I prophesy order, I prophesy order to everything to every part of the world that is listening to this that is out of order in Jesus name so remember if you say yes to the Lord he will say yes to you find Sharita Perry on um, Candy Conversations and say yes with Sharita on the nownetwork.org on Thursday nights at 9 30 p.m the nownetwork.org on Thursday night at 9 30 p.m. Like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I am also on Instagram. I'm SP officially on TikTok. And I am Sharita Perry. And I have Say Yes with Sharita on Facebook. Sharita Perry on Facebook. So I am Prophet Sharita Perry, and I am signing out tonight. I pray that I said something that will touch your homes. And for those who have children and young children, teach your kids the Ten Commandments. Teach your adult kids the Ten Commandments. Say, you know what? We're going to start a new trend this year because we're going to break some generational curses. We're going to break some bad habits, and we are going to not get caught up, hallelujah, with being out of order because we are going to get become and we are going to transition to be in order with God, hallelujah. We are going to transition ourselves to be in order with God. So remember that if you say yes to the Lord, he will say yes to you. And just know that you know that there is a blessing on the other side of your yes. So God loves you and I love you. And until next time.